Today we'll be demonstrating how you can start a new drawing, bring points into that drawing, and create a surface from that drawing with contours. We'll be working with Carlson Survey. So we'll start by going to File, clicking New, using the default template in this case. Next, we'll name this drawing. It takes me to my Carlson Projects folder, and I'll be working in the Survey 2 folder, and we'll just call this Demo 22. I'm going to change my horizontal scale to 20. Verify my data path is in my Survey 2 folder, and a new coordinate file is being created with the same name as my drawing. We'll be importing points from a text ASCII file. So we hit Next. We'll select our ASCII file. Again, from our Survey 2 folder, we have that. We get a preview of our data that we can verify is in the correct order and has the correct delimiter. We also have it set here to go in and draw locate the points once they're imported. They're imported into the CRD file, and now we'll draw locate those points. I'm going to change my symbol. I just prefer an X. And then we'll draw all the points. Now, if we want to build a surface of this, a couple of things we need to do. One is set our boundary around it, but the other is to add our break lines. Now, we can go in manually using tools such as Draw 3D Polyline and add the break lines and the boundary. However, there are easier ways. I'm going to erase these points just from the drawing. They're still in the coordinate file. And then I'm going to use, instead of Draw Locate Points, Draw Field to Finish. Draw Field to Finish will look at the codes in the description and use those codes to determine what layer the line work should go to, what symbol should be used for it, what line type, if any, should be used with it. So we'll go ahead and simply draw this information. Looks like one of our polylines, or two of them, are too long. But now we have line work along with our points. I'm going to zoom in here to find our problem point here at 532, elevation 0. And we can edit those point attributes. I'll give it an elevation of, say, 542.4. And I'm simply splitting the difference between 0.531 and 533. The attribute has changed. The point's z-coordinate has changed. And if we check in our point list for 532, we will find that even our coordinate file has been updated by editing the point with the tools in our points pull-down. So here's our new elevation. All right. All we need to do now is simply rerun Draw Field to Finish because it will erase existing Field to Finish entities so it doesn't draw multiple entities. And now our line is complete and we had no warnings. Next, we can go in and draw a boundary. Using our Shrink Wrap command, we'll go across the gaps at the points specify a layer name, and how tight we want to shrink wrap these. In this case, we'll be using a 2D polyline. We select the entities to shrink wrap, and our boundary is created. Now, the next step I'm going to do here is just verify that that line work is 3D for our break lines. We'll do this using the Drawing Inspector, looking at layer names and elevation. And as we hover over various entities in the drawing, it will tell us what layer it's on and what elevation it happens to be. So you can see our boundaries at zero, but our other polylines all have elevation. So we're good to go there. 
right click and close the drawing inspector. Now we're ready to go ahead and use our surface menu to triangulate and contour. So we'll go in and give our file a name. We'll call this existing ground. We can use inclusion and exclusion areas. That would be our boundary and exclusions would be any place on the interior we don't want triangles like building pads and ponds. Since we don't have any exclusions, rather than selecting this, we can simply let the program utilize the same routine independent of any line work. We'll ignore zero elevation so we don't have to worry about this polyline because it's at zero. We'll contour our surface two foot intervals for the intermediate 10 foot for index, and we'll label these on the index contours only with two labels per contour. We click OK. It asks us to select the object to triangulate. We watch our contours come in, and we get a warning over here saying we have two crossing break lines. Now we can zoom in on these and we can see that this brake line is along our center line going underneath our road. Well, this is most likely a culvert. In this case, I'm simply going to trim this piece of line work out, and we can check and make sure that the second point is, in fact, on the other end of that road. So we'll exit out of there and use a simple AutoCAD trim command to remove that line segment. Now you'll notice the tin did not update immediately there, but what we'll do is simply go back, tell it to triangulate and contour, click OK. It prompts us and to confirm that we're going to overwrite the file, erases the previous contours, and now we can draw the new contours. And they come in without any errors. So we've brought in our points, created our contours, fixed our crossing brake lines, and the last step we'll do here is view this surface with the Carlson 3D Surface Viewer, where we can add a little vertical exaggeration, rotate it, and have it color-coded based on its elevations. Well, I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of importing points and creating a surface. Look forward to the next video we have for you.